you have to you have to put it up into your hands so that static electricity gets negated and then you can just drop it otherwise it sticks to your hand you try to throw it away doesn't work there's only one way that things can go into the future and sometimes we negate that path we're on that negative path right now don't stop I'm only getting started. There was something I had to say. Hi, babe. I love you, baby. I love you, too. I'm just sitting here contemplating. It was something I, I would have said to you that made me feel very good. It's something about the past not having to be part of the future, you know. It's an interesting thing. That's all. I, I saw something with that guy, Ob Barack Obama. He said... In 2012, when he was giving a goddamn Congressional Medal of Honor posthumously to Leslie Sable Jr., Leslie H. Sable Jr., I watched this thing and Brock. Obama said, these are the people that keep America great. And as soon as I saw that, I said, you know what? You want to talk about making America great again? That was the goddamn time right before your time as president when America was great. Why couldn't you just keep it great like he said? Make it a great again? And then I look and I see dead weight. I love you, baby. I love you so much. Excuse me for a moment. You have to excuse me for a moment. I'm about to start reading. I'm reading old stories for the, Jesus, the line I had to open it up with. That line that I had to open it up with was lost. And nobody knows how much they missed. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's not about looking at the past, it's not about looking at the future. You have to see the future, and you have to understand the past. It's not about that. And I, uh, I opened up the uh, toilet readings thing. I did. I, I'm so sorry. I had a line that was in my head. And I was like, I better take a pee before I open this video. I took a pee and I came back in and I said, what the fuck was I talking about? Yeah. If you ever see me take a pee in the middle of a video, because it's because I know, I know, that it's all going to be lost. It's just like dead weight.
if you wonder where you are in this. It might bring it to four. The cowbird is small to middle in size, just a bit larger than the sparrow. The female is of a dull charcoal hue, which covers her body. Then the male swoop in, jet black, with a bronze cowl that covers the head, but allows for its raccoon eyes. The book says they are the only North American bird that lays its eggs in another bird's nest to be raised by them, by strangers larger than its foster siblings, usually shoving at least one of them to its death from the nest. At least one. Hey, you've got Mark Meadows and uh, Bill Burr. That's at least one. It is written that the name of the cowbird came from the lifestyle they had of following the bison and its migratory herd. The same reason is given for why the cowbird lays its eggs in the nest of others. Having gone through this stuff, I felt a camaraderie with this bird, male and female. They were on the move. They didn't have the resources to carry around dead weight. They didn't sit in a Congress hearing and say, oh, you're not going to listen to a woman when they want a woman's word to be compressed. Compressed. How's that? You can't get me in trouble for that. <sighs> Having gone through this stuff, I told camaraderie with this bird. Male and female, they were on the move. They didn't have the resources to carry around dead weight. After I put the feeder up last year, I saw the female. I thought she was a mutant sparrow. Big boobs, getting better food. Then the next day, a couple of the males showed up after she arrived. I've never seen a male without the female showing up first. They marched around her, puffing up with their breath, then letting it out. Same as a gackle, grackle, same as a grackle. Only their chirp had something prettier to it. They all flew off, probably to screw. After a few days of this, they quit coming around. She must have been pregnant, looking for the, a next, a nest to dump her load in. They must have gotten the hell out of there. I gathered from that and looking up the cowbird, that the cowbird is like me, the cowbird is hornier, hornier than all get out. The cowbird just wants to screw. It doesn't want kids. And now she's pregnant and doesn't even know whom the father is. So she dumps the kid off. 
It's hard to be a single mother, especially when you're a slut. I mean, look at all these things that they're saying that, that these people are sending me letters. I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm trying to think uh, between the names of them all that. Uh, no, I have no idea who that is. I would have to look it up. It's just mind bending, isn't it? That, uh, Well, you see it, and then you look back one page. You, you act like you care, but you don't care. And there's this other... story that has been sent because somebody wants it heard. That poor tree outside. She's lived there probably her whole life. She's lived there afraid of everything because she can't scream. She can't fight. She can't just walk away. She's gone ahead and done everything in fear. Eaten, drank the water at her feet, had her children even tried to love, hiding there in her own shadow. Fear her whole life because what other choice does she have? But the final truth is scarier than all the fears she has suffered. The truth is that she's gotten away with all these things her entire life. Her entire life. Not out of bravery. But because nobody has ever cared about her to begin with. Nobody paid attention. So there was nothing for her to fear at all.